Hey guys, this is Emery Welshman from Toronto, Canada. Number 10, striker, winger. I'm here at the IMG Academy chatting with Cincy Soccer Talk. Great to finally meet you, Emery. Um, so we're just here, you know, kind of to meet all the players, to let our fans get to know you guys a little bit better. So I'd just like to ask you a few questions about yourself so that they can get to know you. Um, you mentioned striker, winger. Obviously, you're in, in the front four. You like to attack, you like to score, it sounds like. But what position would you say you're the most comfortable playing? Um, I mean, I grew up playing striker my whole life. But um, as I've moved forward with the, with the sport, I've actually been transferred out wide a little bit more. And um, so I'm comfortable playing both. But uh, to be honest, I don't really have too much of a preference. Just I like being in attacking positions. OK. You say you're predominantly left-footed or right-footed? I'm predominantly right-footed, yes. Right -footed. Okay. Uh, and then uh, let's uh, talk about your you know, soccer history a little bit. Um, so did you always play in the United States or Canada? You said you're from Canada. Did you always play in Canada or did you play in the United States, other countries, anywhere else? Um, well, yeah, I grew up playing in Canada and then um, got a soccer scholarship to Siena College, which is a mid-major D1 school in Albany, New York. Okay. Um, I spent my first two years there and then transferred to Oregon State for my final two years. Um, I was drafted to Toronto FC, which was nice to go home for my first professional experience. Uh, things didn't work out there, and my next move was to Salt Lake, Utah, with the Monarchs, and then with Real Salt Lake, the MLS team, and then last season I spent the year with Puerto Rico FC. So you've been uh, all over the Americas, or the North American area. Well-traveled well yeah, in North exactly. America. <laughs> um, so uh, what would you say, and it doesn't have to necessarily be in your professional career, it could even be as a youth, but what was your most memorable soccer moment? Um, I mean, it's it's really tough to go back to when I was really young. Um, I'm sure my mom and dad would probably have some really good stories about that. But well, maybe we'll have them on. They can tell us. <laughs> I'll let them know. Okay. Um, but I, it would have to be being um, drafted in the first round to my hometown team, Toronto FC. Um, I was a fan of them from when they announced the club back in 2006 or seven, mm -hmm. and. Um, it was a dream come true. You know, um, I had a close friend get drafted the same um, draft class with me and everything just kind of went like a story, right? So um, I was really excited for that. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out, but um, that's how the sport goes, right? Yeah, but that, that moment when you got drafted, that was obviously exciting. That was great. Yeah, that was, that was, like I said, the most exciting <laughs> moment in my career. Perfect. So, right? um, so you, you mentioned uh, following Toronto FC. But was there any other uh, clubs that you followed outside of like the North American area? Anybody in Europe or South America? Any teams that you're a big fan of? Um, yeah, I'd say I'm a I'm a good I'm a big Arsenal fan. Okay. Um, emphasis on the big, you know, they're not doing too well these days. But mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, I'm not going to jump ship. A fan's a fan, right? Not gonna, yeah, yeah not gonna become a City fan or United fan. No. None, Ooh. Of, none of that. None of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm an Arsenal fan. I, I love the way they play. I probably was a fan of them after the 1998 World Cup. Um, when I That was when I first saw Henri play. And then um, when I found out him and a few other French players were on Arsenal, that kind of made me, um, you know, watch them a little bit more. Yeah. And then I saw how great play of players they were. And um, to be honest, I was a big Ronaldo 9 fan mm -hmm. from Brazil. But uh, in Canada, we didn't really get the Serie A games, you know, too frequently. Right, right, right. So the Premier League was at our disposal and Arsenal was my team. Great to hear. You got a lot of uh, gunners on, on FC Cincinnati. So, yeah, the days aren't too bright. So I guess everybody's been keeping that quiet because I haven't yeah, heard too yeah, many. Yeah, no. No, I ask, I'm asking them all. So I, I got a list. You know, okay, you know, we, cool. we know who you are now. No, no there's, there's, a, there's a huge uh, gunners uh, supporters group okay, here in Cincinnati. And, you know, they, they get together in the mornings and watch okay. games and stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. They, uh, misery loves company. <laughs> so, um, so let's uh, maybe talk about uh, your teammates a little bit, right? So, you know, it's three weeks into preseason. You've gotten to know these guys a little bit. I wouldn't say you're, you know, you haven't shared all your life stories with them or anything. But has anybody maybe stood out in the, in the group so far? Um, 
today actually is four weeks where we've been together so it's a it's going yeah, on to a month now yeah. and um yeah i've gotten to know quite a few of them pretty well soccer wise a lot of them stood out um we have a really talented team which is a blessing and a curse right so yeah. we are we know we have um a target on our backs a lot of the team's friends have men mentioned to me already that um we've got a very deep squad and that we've been taking some really good players and so we know that players teams are coming out for us which is fine right if yep. we didn't want that kind of attention we wouldn't have signed for this team or this team wouldn't have looked for us but um yeah our team stacked with talent and to be fair if one player did really stand out it's um emmanuel ledesma okay. his quality man every day you see him do something that you're just like you played in the premier league did you yeah like mm -hmm. You must have played pretty high levels in your life to do stuff like this. And um, for me, I'm just honored to be on the field with him. I'm kind of proud of myself to be like, you've done all these great things and we're, we're going to suit up together in the same league on the same level. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of other players too. Nas is a great player. Um, we have, we have talent all over the field so it's it's really tough to just oh, that's find fun. out you know one or two but yeah. we look good it's great yeah so uh i would say first off i, I think you, you undercut yourself a little bit by saying you're just honored to play with them i i've seen some of your moves at training you know some heel heel flicks into the goal and a, a bicycle uh, a kick and a volley i mean you're you, i think you i think fans are going to enjoy watching you uh, up top taking I some try, strikes I try. um but uh yeah, definitely as far as the target on our backs, I think a lot of teams circle Cincinnati on the calendar when they when they start talking about away games and things like that. They they come ready to play, so it, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, so besides just, you know, those players who are impressive or whatever, um, you know, the other side of this is, is to have a little fun, right? So who, who's out there maybe being the jokers of the team, have, lightening the load a little bit, uh, you know, and causing, causing some humor at times? Uh, we have quite a few of them, but right now, to me, the funniest on the funniest out of the bunch has been Mark Village. Yeah. Um, our keeper from, he's another Canuck like myself. Yep. He's just in a different. He's from a different area, so he has that real stereotypical Canuck accent. And uh, when he puts it on, it's really when he really puts on the accent, it's a it's a good laugh. And uh, he's a good time. He he lightens the mood in the mornings. There's been some mornings already that. You know, you're you're already three weeks into preseason. You know, some teams haven't even started preseason yet, and you're like, wow, this is gonna this is um this is gonna be tough to get through all this. But we know the end game, and Mark always comes in with a big smile on his face, usually some joke, and um, just letting you know, Mark, the team appreciates you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we've we've certainly heard some stories about Mark so far, so so I think uh, he he is definitely in the running for the uh, the the character of the team at the moment. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, what, let's talk about leadership within the team. Obviously, a lot of people came into this team as, as leaders from their own team. Uh, and I don't mean wearing the captain's armband, but I'm talking about the people who, who people turn to and look to and listen to. Um, but has anybody stood out uh, rising above the rest as, as somebody who's, who's definitely going to be a voice within this team? That's really tough to say. Um, there are a few vocal leaders, but a lot of the... I would take more leadership qualities from the players who are showing it on the field, mm -hmm. you know, and we have a lot of those. Um, Dekel, our new um, center back from Israel, is a really, really experienced player. He's played all over at the highest of levels, right? So he's not very much of a vocal leader where you'd almost expect that from such a experienced player, mm -hmm. but the way he carries himself, the way he, he trains and takes care of his body, et, et cetera, makes him stand out as a leader already so i'll see stuff like that you'll you'll see stuff like that justin does you know a player who's mm -hmm. played at arsenal in the premier league as well as manuel um those kind of players that show their qualities on the field and how well they take care of themselves off of it as well it's what you need in leaders but like i said this team's very experienced itself mm -hmm. so it's um it's tough to tough to pinpoint just one leader or two leaders where we all know the business, we all have been there before. So um, we could look to ourselves and everybody beside us to actually be the leaders, right? You can put that armband almost on anybody and nobody would have disputes about it. 
Good. Um, let's let's uh, discuss Cincinnati a little bit. Have you uh, ever been to Cincinnati before you came? To no. Club? Um, I want to say this is my first time in Cincinnati, uh, maybe even in Ohio. So okay, looking forward to exploring it a bit more. Yeah. Any uh, any thoughts you had about the city before you got here? Anything that surprised you once you arrived? Um, no, not really. You know, it's um, I know it's an East Coast state an east coast um city so the weather was um weather might be the one surprising thing i knew it would be it's not puerto rico yeah i'm not (laughs) i'm not used to puerto rico though i grew up in toronto (laughs) right so i knew it was going to be similar to toronto's weather and um i didn't know how bipolar it was going to be you know one day's toronto's weather and then the next day you see students out there in shorts and and sweaters and stuff so um, that's Ohio. <laughs> and that's what I've heard from a lot of yeah. um, people from the city or people who've played on the team that you can't really predict the weather. And that might be the one thing that's surprised me. Okay. Um, have, you said you didn't, haven't had much chance to get out and see much of the city at this point. No, not um, yet. Any places you've maybe, restaurants you've tried or any little shops um, you've been to, anything that impressed? I did go to the one mall that had the Cheesecake Factory in it. Kendall by, Mall, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think yep. that, that sounds about right. Um, it was an hour and a half wait, but it was <laughs> well worth it. You know, Cheesecake's always great. Yeah. And uh, we got to explore the mall a little bit. So okay. that was important. I was with my wife and my son, so oh, just kind of showing them around. And um, also it was my first time seeing the mall. So that was kind of the extent of it. Um, we're going to look forward to going to the aquarium. The little one would love that. Yeah. I've heard about the amusement park king's island king's island i've yeah, heard a got, lot about say, that you gotta take your little one to king's so island. um i'm looking forward to when the weather gets a little bit better absolutely and um taking them to see those places and and i have to it's the mandatory question i have to ask but have you tried skyline chili yet no i have not tried skyline chili yet there's one right by us yep. where our apartments are and um i think i'll wait for um a little bit more into the season to get that yeah. going. Yeah, it's not the greatest preseason food at all, <laughs> um, but but it is it is something that we're very proud of in Cincinnati. It's something pretty unique to us. So <laughs> hopefully you get a chance to try it before uh, I definitely before will. the season ends. <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate talking to you. Thanks you a lot. You too. Thank you. Take care. Yep. You too.